When looking for an exotic vacation, one of the countries that come to mind most often is Thailand. This Asian country has a lot to offer its guests. Its abundance of magnificent temples with gigantic statues of the Buddha, the natural resources available for everyone to explore, its jaw-dropping beaches, famous cuisine and street food, and its reputation as a shopping haven for bargain lovers, among so many others. But just like any other country, Thailand also has a side that others might consider seedy. Researching or reading about the country, there's a huge chance you might encounter the word "gratoi," which they use to refer to transgenders, better known as ladyboys. Thailand's ladyboys are famous all over the world, and many travelers go to Thailand specifically to meet them. Ladyboys have been around Thailand for a long time, and it's quite a bit surprising that they continue to be so prevalent, despite the negative stigma associated with them. In fact, they are considered as part of the Thai culture. There are so many reasons why ladyboys continue to thrive, and here are some of them. Ladyboy, transgender person, or the third gender, they are all called Gratoi in Thailand. The term transgender is rarely used in Thailand. Instead, the common term is Gratoi, which was once used to define intersex people, human beings who are born with ambiguous genitalia. Gratoi have become entirely common in Thai society. Like everyone else, they go about their daily affairs, shopping, meeting with friends, using public transport, visiting the temple. Ladyboy, transgender, or the third gender is merely used in Thailand. Large ladyboy population in Thailand. Thailand beholds the highest rate of transsexuals throughout the world. According to Sam Winter, the numbers differ from about 10,000 to unofficial 300,000 substantially. Above that estimates the transgender in most other parts of the world. That community creates sound public opinion environment for those of a different sexual orientation. They can enjoy their freedom of expressing themselves. In particular, one was born gratoi because of some sexual misdemeanor in earlier life or lives, or that they failed to fulfill an expected role in the reproductive process, such as a man not caring for a woman who is pregnant by him. Whatever the reason, it is important to note that the common belief says there is no escaping from the karmic consequences. Everyone has been gratoi at once in previous lives and will be again in future ones. Thus, gratoi should be treated with compassion. Big cities have wider acceptance. Gratoi acceptance in society depends on the area in which they live. In the bigger cities, it is more normalized to be gratoi. In more rural villages, the treatment of gratoi is described as tolerance than acceptance. Miss Tiffany Universe Miss Tiffany Universe is a beauty pageant for transgender women in Pattaya, Thailand. The contest is open to all transgender women who may or may not have gone through sexual reassignment surgery. The Miss Tiffany Universe contest, held once a year, is receiving more attention, especially since it is broadcast live on Thai television with an average of 15 million viewers. The Miss Tiffany Universe winner receives a trophy, a crown, Honda Jazz, cash prizes, jewelry and other gifts from sponsors. Lady Gaga gained her inspiration from cabaret shows or drag show in Thailand. Cabaret shows are popular and widespread in Thai culture. The Calypso in Bangkok is said to be where Lady Gaga gained a lot of her inspiration. And the Tiffany has been compared to Miss Universe of Gratoi culture. These cabaret shows include elaborate song and dance routines with elegant costume. One might be tempted to compare these shows for the drag shows in the US. But in these shows, the performers are not just taking on a female persona. Many of them identify themselves as women. They work as normal Thai people. The lifestyle of the Gratoi varies as well. Mostly though, the Gratoi live like other Thai people. They work as hairdressers, filmmakers, sex workers, waitresses, models, and other jobs that you would find any women. They have romantic relationships and are allowed to marry. 
Gua Te Le, like other Thai people, are just people. Gua Te Le's are more visible and more accepted in Thai culture than transsexuals in other countries in the world. Several popular Thai models, singers, and movie stars are Gua Te Le, and Thai newspapers often print photographs of the winners of female and Gua Te Le beauty contests side by side. The phenomenon is not restricted to those areas. There are gratuities in most villages, and gratuity beauty contests are commonly held as part of local fairs. Various feminizing surgeries to choose from. Gratuity have easy access to hormones and surgery. Local chain drugstores can carry as many as 29 hormonal preparations all available without a doctor's note over the shop counter. Many dress as women and undergo a wide range of feminizing medical procedures, such as breast implants, hormones, silicone injections, or Adam apple reductions. That is why a gatele is hard to distinguish. Developmental pathways for who to want to be a gatele. Once a young boy has become discontented about his gender identity, he finds that modern Thai society opens up for him a clear developmental path. On one hand, media personalities, actresses, singers, models, beauty queens provide role models to aim for. Nearer at hand, an older peer or often a fellow student may provide first social contact with a gratuit. These older role models can provide the young gratuit with important information, initially regarding hormones, clothes, makeup, beauty contests, and etc and perhaps later on extending to information about employment and surgery. Gratuit career. A word here about economics. A nose operation can cost from 240 US dollars. Sex reassignment surgery can cost around 950 US dollars. To save even that money, one needs a job, while salaries are low in Thailand. The cost of surgery, therefore, and to draw gatui to the cabarets and bars for work, the cabarets are often unobjectionable spectacles of dance, music, and costume for tourists. While the salaries are small, much more might come and can be earned from this given by tourists taking photos. The bars, on the other hand, provide a vehicle for prostitution. Both provide a way of earning the kind of money that makes surgery possible. Also, with hope of meeting a Westerner who might take her to his country, where apart from anything else, she might be able to achieve legal status as a female and marry them. Beautiful soldiers. Like many countries, Thailand's military has conscription by way of lottery. In draft day, all men over 21, even those who no longer consider themselves to be male, are required to attend the conscription lottery once. In practice, gratuit or ladyboys are almost always exempted from military service, but they are still required to attend the lottery. Thai law forbids people from changing their gender on national identification documents. So all trans women remain officially recognized as male. These annual scenes of beautifully dressed women sitting among crowds of more conventionally male-looking recruits draws more eyes. Now to the big question here, especially for those of you who are visiting Thailand for the first time and whatnot, is probably how to spot a ladyboy on your travels. Here are some tips for spotting a Thai ladyboy. Too tall. Most women in Thailand are petite and short. However, there is also an exception to that rule. But if they are actually too tall, then definitely be suspicious. Very feminine. Lady boys love to wear makeup and pay a lot of attention to their clothing and sexy dresses. They have broad shoulders. They go no bra. It's very uncommon for women in Thailand to go braless. They have an Adam's apple although this can also be operated nowadays, and their unfeminine tone or voice. These are generic tips, but a good beginner guide for those of you who don't really know what to look for. Also, at the end of the day, you can always straight up ask them. Usually, they are very open about it and are not offended if you ask. I hope these points mentioned in this video demonstrate how an outsider's point of view is vastly different from that of the locals when ladyboys are involved.
Many have this idea that ladyboys are merely sex workers and have a negative stereotype. And while the former may be true, the latter is definitely far from reality. Ladyboys are no different from any other person. They just choose to live their lives the way they see fit by openly defying gender stereotypes. Fortunately for them, Thailand is accepting of them. If you like this video and want to see more videos like this, please click the link here. And that's it for today. Goodbye.